Hello there everyone and welcome back to Better Than Wolves. We are back here at our primary base after our brief tour of the old world. Um, that's really only, a, we only really scratched the surface of the old world. There's a lot more builds out there, but this is our home now and we have to treat it as such. Oh, in case you're wondering, the potatoes are, potatoes are planted over at the main base there. We'll uh, deal with them at a later date. Today, I'm going to actually get the next another piece of automation here at the factory. I think we'll call this the factory. I don't know what else to call it really. But in keeping with my lovely little reed collector here, we're going to do a similar thing on the other side. Theoretically, this is going to be storage or something in the future, so that's why I've sort of cleared this area out. Oh, cool. The bonus lighting is always kind of cool, too. So, we've made a reed farm. We need... Where are the leftover... There's... Whoops. That'll make it awfully hard to get anything out of there. We need a hopper for collection. And everything else, as you can see, except... Oh, except for one very important thing. Where? There it is. Excellent. Now we have everything we need. And you guys can probably guess what it's going to be. It's going to be an automated uh, hemp farm. Again, a little one. doesn't have to be huge. And it's going to be built basically in the mirror location to the other one. So I've got to do a little bit of prep work here, which I will cut briefly to get done. And I will bring you back in once I have actually got this in a ready state to install the hardware. Because of course the needs of hemp are quite different from the needs of reeds. Are these actually growing? That's my only concern. As long as these things, these, well, we'll know soon if these are actually growing. If not, I have an actual plan to help them grow. But, okay, I shall return. Alrighty, I have carved out a bit of a workspace here. I don't know the exact layout I'm going to use yet, but I need to do some experiments first. And also craft some of the remaining bits and bobs of our materials. So, just as a little refresher, uh, one of the critical things about growing hemp is that it will either it requires either full sunlight or light blocks. It will not grow under torches. It will not grow under um, glowstone or anything else. It has to be the better than wolves light blocks, and they have to be. If the planter is, let's just go over by a wall here, and I'll show you. If the planter is here, they have to be precisely two blocks between, so one block, two block, and then that torch marks where the uh, light block has to be. So with that, bearing that in mind, that really, really limits the design of this space here, because that's the actual outer wall of this. So what I don't know is what it requires to power these light blocks. That's seven and eight, but that's where they have to go. And then likewise for over here, we're going to need one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then the other thing we're gonna have is pistons. Now I was thinking about putting them there, but I'm wondering if I need to put them one further back. Because we have to power these light blocks somehow. I'm not entirely sure what we're gonna have to do to do that yet. It takes nine redstone to make a redstone block, right? Torches. Let's make one redstone torch and see what we got here. Yeah, if I, okay, oh, you know what? I have a really, really easy solution to this. And solution so easy, I'm glad I thought of it. 
I mean, you know, you know me. I'm I'm silly obsessed with symmetry sometimes. Just just absolutely not so. I'd call it almost a uh, nervous tick in a way. But I'm not a slave to it, and I, I refuse to be a slave to it when there's an obvious, easy solution to my problem staring me in the face like this. It'll solve all the issues I could possibly have with... Because these things don't... As far as I know, these things don't transmit redstone. So knowing that, we should be able to just go... 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8... Which means we're going to need a whole bunch of extra torches and we are going to need the extra that we're inevitably going to have here and then we go so by making the water stream three wide instead of two which we have the luxury of being able to do we can run a line of redstone torches down the middle and there we go we are lit up now i've already prepared the planter boxes here which are going to go right here It's going to be exactly eight, as as usual, because that's the length of this water stream. Again, this is the easy, obvious stuff, which I probably should have done off camera in preparation. But you know what? It'll be fine. Now, the nice thing about hemp is we don't have to worry about a few things that we had to deal with when making the uh, reed farm. For example, hemp doesn't... Uh, You need to keep the uh, lower part of the hemp, which means we don't need to worry about losing a bit. Yeah, that's what I'm trying to say. We don't have to worry about timing timers. There's no worry about timers in this because the uh, it's basically an on-off state. We're either pushing stuff off or we're not pushing stuff off. So this right here, what we've just placed, is going to be the hardest part of this whole program. And that is going to be powering those pistons. So, because those pistons will be triggered by, and we're going to put this over here because it's the smart place to put it. There we are. So the redstone is going to come out the back there, and pri the primary control-oriented redstone is going to be up that way. Because what this is going to be is it's going to be the beginnings of a monostable circuit right there. So when I stand in front of it, it creates a redstone signal. And we'll take the redstone around and under to power the remaining ones. Which some of these we may have to power from um, below. Maybe? I don't know. Haven't figured that part out yet. Let's figure out how to power the other 99% of these things, which is pretty obvious that they don't require fancy redstone because we're just going to use it as a bio clock. So it's going to require, oh, this is actually going to be really easy. Because we're just treating all 64, all, all of these guys as a single unit, that means we can just do a redstone line powering system and up in the back here, we can have the complex redstone, which is going to consist of basically a monostable circuit and nothing else. So that'll be the powering line right there. This will be our way out. So we need to build a monostable circuit attached to that, this guy right here, which we should be able to squeeze in right here. In fact, we'll take it off the back because it's the smart way to do it. Okay, now is there anything else here? No, there's nothing of concern over there. We just want to make sure we don't... Um... Okay, I don't have some of the parts I need to make a monostable circuit, but let's get this redstone in first to make sure we don't wind up with interference. Perfect. Uh-oh. That could be unfortunate. I'm wearing some chain armor which is making things a little dangerous all right we'll temporarily temporarily plug up the collection stream so we can get in and out of here easily okay so far so good okay we can get rid of this too which is good those are already growing too now are my reeds growing 
Yes, they are. Excellent. Okay. So the read farm is working, and it will trigger when the read in the back corner there grows to maximum height. Might not be the most efficient system, but I mean, you got to use something as your clock to uh, make this happen. All right, so we're going to need a few extra torches. Might as well grab those, even though I'm not that worried. All right. So we need to take a signal under here and bring it back up to the top. So we'll probably take it under from the monostable circuit, which is going to be right in here. So we go monostable circuit is block, block. All right, and repeater, one, two, three, four. Hold on, redstone up on top there. Thank goodness we're underneath the back stairs, huh? Okay, and then torch on the side, signal comes around, and torch on the side, and that is a monostable circuit, which means that if I've done this right, I'm not that worried about that water stream, I trust that it will not disrupt, because nothing is going to disrupt it. So that means when I hop up onto this, and, oh, well, of course, it would work better if I hooked the silly thing up so that I could actually see it work. Yes, let's test it without actually testing it. There we go. Now that should trigger a quick pulse from the pistons. Oh, oops. Oh. Um, right. What was the catch? Oh, right, we need a counter. We need a... One last little detail. Because there's two going to be... It's going to be a double pulse, and we only need it. We only want a single pulse to actually generate a signal. That's going to require another block dispenser. That's my favorite way of generating a single pulse. It's compact, too. All we need is a non transmitting block like another brick column because why not why not indeed I made them for this place as part of the demo demonstration way back and never wound up using them okay so we're just gonna make ourselves a little more room here so that we can do this right because we don't want this to get cross wired so we need one pulse generates a signal, one pulse stops the signal. So no matter what happens, only one of these two signals will actually be sent. So if we do this right, we should only get a single pulse. Beautiful. We're almost ready. Now we just need to get this signal from here down three, four, five, one lower. All right, so one, two, three, and this will be underneath the next planter. Perfect. All right, so let's just do a count here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, eleven, twelve, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Whoops! So oh, that's going to just do a bit of damage. This is why you got to be careful when you're laying redstone underneath water. All right, recount. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. Fifteen. All right. OK. 
Okay, we'll push the signal into there. All right, actually, if we bring it up one block faster, I think we can make this work really cleanly. Hmm. Nope. Hold on. No, nope. we'll do it. The we'll do it our original plan. That in there. One. So we need a double inverted, actually. Now that I think about it. Um, torch column. So the one side will be slightly slower than the other, but that's okay. Because they don't have to trigger simultaneously. They just have to both trigger. So, okay, that is linked indeed to the redstone above or the pistons above. And then that one will close them off. And then, last but not least, we push a signal in there, put a light in there. Okay, if my calculations are correct, and I believe, I have reason to believe they are, I have no reason to doubt them. We should be able to just close this off most of the way. Of course, that won't actually allow a signal through anymore. So we'll just have to fix that, jump up here, because we should never have to come back up here again. There we go. In we, come on, let me up, let me up. All right, it's testing time. Perfect. That is an automated hemp farm. 100% fully automagic hemp farm. All I need to do is temporarily seal this up so that I don't have to look at any of the extra bits and bobs here in the future. I'll just have a very lightweight view in there. Perfect. In fact, I don't even need to see anything. I could close this right off because the only reason I had this other one opened was so that I could check to see if things were growing. And I now know that they are growing. So all I really need to do is seal this right off. And there we go. There is our hemp and read delivery system. So if I really wanted I could add a second row to either of these farms, but I don't know that, I mean, as I work in this area, my instinct is that just general time spent in the area will generate more than enough of it. I mean, that re you saw how much hemp I had at that farm back at the uh, Old World. And that thing generated a stupid amount of hemp, like an insane quantity. So I'm fine with the idea of not rushing the build uh, addition of more farms to this. Anyways, that is how simple it is to build a hemp farm. Expensive on resources, cheap on space, and really, really, really low complexity. So that's all for today. Just a quick one today. Uh, thank you all very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.